three, two, one. This is your Libertarian Crusaders podcast, episode number 25. And today we have, uh, you know, our new portrait of Ron Paul, representation of the Ron Paul militia. And not to say that we have anything against Lysandra Spooner, but he had his moment up here and never to be, I guess, of course, forgotten from us. And I think uh, it's good representation, especially since yesterday. Uh, you could say some, some members of the Ron Paul militia went out there and saw uh, a threat, a, a tyrant coming into Virginia. And we thought to give him a genuine Virginian welcome and at the Bloomberg event <laughs> in Richmond at um, at this brewery, Hard, Hardy Park. Hardywood. I always, I always say it wrong. Yeah. I, I, I say like Hardywood, Hardy Park. <laughs> <laughs> you can call it Hardy Park. I think that's funnier. <laughs> Uh, so I guess in the, at the end of this week, we're going to find out whether or not we're banned from the place or uh, they'll welcome us back to say at least we say some kind words about the place. And we'll talk about what we think about the boycotts and all that that, that stuff, too, because that's apparently a big thing now happening on their Facebook page. But we'll start off about uh, the event. Um, we saw this event. I think I saw you post about it, uh, that Bloomberg was coming to town. And it was I thought it was like maybe next week, but it was like the very next day. Yeah, Amy told me about it first. A uh, friend of the show, Amy Strasser, and it was, uh, she said, you know, she had signed up and then I signed up um, and it seemed like, okay, well, this is a trade off, you know, if I'm signing up for this, then they know who I am. But it didn't seem that well organized. So when we got there, so. Right. We were just vibe checking with the place and just kind of going with, uh, with the feel of it. And uh, Vincent was mentioning me earlier that he was going to try to do something to at least uh, get some attention and possibly get kicked out. Yeah, my intentions were definitely to get kicked out. <laughs> oh, did we mention this is Mike Mike Bloomberg? Mike Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah. we mentioned Mike Bloomberg was coming, coming, and uh, so that was the tyrant, right? So. All right. Yeah. And well, go ahead. I was just gonna say, you know, like you know, six emperor Tyrannus. This is what we do to tyrants. So if a tyrant comes in here, I mean, I'm, a lot of people might be upset. Sorry, I'm not violent with him or anything like that, but I definitely wanted to speak my mind to him. So, and he heard it. He responded to it. So it worked. You said some harsh words, and some people on the internet get upset when people say harsh words yeah. to people. I think the but, uh, uh, I, I recorded, I put it in out there, but yeah, so it was telling me like he's going to give me the the look when he's getting ready. I got my camera ready, and I figured before we did any of that stuff, five minutes before we put our gun save live stickers, I felt like I was sneaking in contraband because I had one <laughs> in my jacket. It was like showing them to my friends, like. Yeah, that's You're right. like, this is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is I actually, I was wearing a Bloomberg sticker because technically we were supporters when we registered to show up. And um, I went outside to smoke a cigarette and I saw the pro Second Amendment protesters out there. And I saw one guy passing out the stickers. So I decided, well, you know, I'll take a few for, <clears throat> for everyone else. So um, I, I felt like it was definitely contraband. Like, you know, sneaking it around and like having that handed out to you guys, it was. Yeah, I'm glad you brought those first stickers because I had an old one that was starting losing its like stickiness of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did feel like contraband. I did feel like there's a moment where we could have like maybe open the side door for them to come in. Uh, but I think the cops were out there already patrolling. When we first got there, there was no police presence at all. Right. Yeah, that, that came pretty fast. Um, I didn't see the protesters, I guess, until after we already were inside. Right. And right. There's a funny moment because uh, there's this guy who was uh, bothering you. Right. Because you had your camera. Right. And he was just pretty much asking you a thousand questions. Yeah. He um, I don't know why. I think it's because he saw me speaking to the pro Second Amendment protesters. Uh, and um, so um, he, he came up to me. He was asking who I was, who I was with, if I was independent and stuff. And I was just explaining to him I'm independent. He stood there at his phone, looking at his phone, texting. He was like, give me one second. Texting, texting. And then he uh, looks back at me and goes, okay, you're good. And then walks away. So I was like, hmm, this is a little weird. Right. I can't imagine us actually sitting there for the entire event and listening to like a, a very effeminate speaking man. <laughs> this weird little matters. baby tyrant telling you what you can and can't do. <laughs> Talking about nothing. And he, uh, the, his biggest applause line was, we need to get Donald Trump out of the White House. And that sounded like the only reason one of those folks would actually support Michael Bloomberg. Right. They, they just don't like Trump. And I don't think that's going to be enough. Right. Uh, Orange man bad. Right. I thought their uh, thing about Trump that they didn't like was uh, the allegations of sexual assault 
uh, the racism, the sexism, the misogyny. When he kissed that 11-year-old on the he's stage. A, right? a billionaire. A billionaire, <laughs> part of the 1%, a New Yorker. And <laughs> <laughs> what do we have with Bloomberg? Yeah, <laughs> Essentially same the thing. same. <laughs> Yeah, he believes in climate change, um, and uh, I think that's about it. But how so, many private jets does he have? Yeah, he, I think he's way, way, way more wealthy than Trump, if I'm not mistaken. Like in the sixty billion, I think is yeah. where I heard he's at. Yeah, I can see that. And I would say that he definitely had enough money to buy everyone free uh, drink tickets. Yes. And I would say our out- outburst and protests was inspired by and paid for by Bloomberg TM. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, bought a T-shirt, so a uh, Hardywood T-shirt, because in case I'm never allowed back, you know, <laughs> I just really like the merch. So I do like their beer. I like the location. I like the atmosphere is nice there. I mean, I got nothing really bad to say about it. I've that. been going there every year. They have a nice uh, uh, the trucks that go there for their food. Um, they do have good stouts. I like stouts. Yeah, it's always been a good uh, atmosphere. I think there has been some kind of uh, event maybe last year of a Republican host an event there, and maybe they were saying that we're not doing this sort of thing again because they had like a lot of like uh, uh, negative comments. But you know, here you are bringing Bloomberg, so you can't really say. Or maybe that's that's a good even trade, right? You bring a Republican last year, you bring a Democrat, uh, and you kind of balance that out, right? And I could see if uh, a Republican wants to rent it out and they say no, then I guess I could see there be more of a cause to say that, you know, you're definitely in alignment with Bloomberg. But at the same time, this is Virginia. <laughs> this is a New York. And I think at some point you should, you know, side more with Virginian values against uh, someone from uh, New York coming in here who are trying to take those values and rights away. Right. Yeah. They they re- by the judging by a lot of the people who showed up to it. Uh, you want one guy was wearing a Yankees j- jacket, you know, and, and it was just that sort of thing that he he does. They, these people don't really put two and two together, and they really feel like wherever they're from, uh, it should just be transferred along with them. And so, like, I supported gun control in New York, and now I moved to Virginia, and I'm just going to continue supporting gun control because, um, I you know. I'm not going to adopt this new state's philosophy on anything. Right. You know? And that's what turned his, you know, those states into such terrible places to live. Right. Right. So, yeah, I think uh, they fumbled the ball on that without realizing the atmosphere and the attitudes of people here, especially at the gun rally. Right. When you have 50 to 100,000 people show up on that Monday, just, uh, just less than a month ago, uh, the attitude towards people coming into Virginia right now who are vehemently anti gun uh, is not going to be easily dismissed or overlooked. So, Bad marketing strategy on their part. I mean, they could easily say, yeah, no, sorry, we'd love to. But uh, the benefits of like the outbursts and the feedback uh, outweighs, you know, having stickers of Bloomberg on our uh, oak barrels inside the, the venue. Um, but I will say the drinks were good. Uh, I did enjoy uh, going back around and getting more free drink tickets. Nothing like free beer. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and so that was kind of fun. There was a moment where we were standing outside and we were kind of chatting to together before we did our thing. And there was some media pet press, fake news people trying to get in through the side. And Vince was like, don't let that guy in. That's the guy that questioned me. And I was like, all right. And he's like, yo, here's my pass. Let me in. Because we're in the side door. We're not by the entrance. And the guy's like, and I was like, can't help you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually, I was standing right next to you when that happened. And um, I did the Bugs Bunny no thing. I was like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're not paying me enough Bloomberg money to open doors for people. I'm right. Like, yes. right. But yeah, free drinks is kind of nice. It felt like like maybe five more free drinks and then, sure, yeah, I'll give up my freedoms and liberties. That's a right. good trade-off, yeah. right? Good bribe. Yeah. yeah one, at one point, he said, uh, he was like, uh, I'm not sure whether all of you came here for the beer or to see me speak. And I was like, <laughs> I know what I came for. <laughs> He's got the most Woody Allen pathetic New Yorker sound to his voice. And it's just like, Ugh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> it's whiny. He's so whiny. <laughs> you ever seen that movie uh, Hannibal Lecter, the villain with the <laughs> cut-up face? And he's like on life support, and his face looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Have you seen that? No. no? <laughs> when he talks, it's like that. Well, he, Hannibal Lecter like ate his face off, and so he's got to live on life support. His face looks broken, and his voice is broken, of course. So he kind of talks like, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I swear, if you guys watch that, put it side by side, same voice. Oh, man. <laughs> 
Ugh. Yeah, Trump would just uh, oh, if they were debating, I mean, Trump would just shred the guy. I, I feel, I, I think, you know, or there, maybe he's maybe Bloomberg's got some kind of kryptonite. Uh, billionaire you know, versus billionaire, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> both from New York. I really see no difference except for Bloomberg's actively a baby tyrant, and Trump just talks tough and. You know, he knows how to talk tough, though. He does. That's for sure. <laughs> He's already out there calling him Tiny Mike. <laughs> yeah. Mini, Mini Mike. Mini Mike. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, I actually that was I had a list of things I wanted to say. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get to say much of it. I, I stuck to like one phrase. Um, but one of the things I wanted to call him was a, a short fuck. And I thought it would have been hilarious, especially because I'm about five foot four. And I think he might be taller than me, but it doesn't matter. Um, you I think you fight him? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. I just think it'd be like a really funny thing. You could, know? You, could you take him on? Maybe, maybe. Right. I mean, what's he gonna do? Slap me? Right? Scratch me? <laughs> Get him! <laughs> His response to everything was so pathetic. I actually went and rewatched it, and he's like, "Okay, all right, yeah, okay, get him out of here." And then the and then the other guy at the fundraiser event later. He just kind of brushes this guy's criticism off and he's like, oh, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> that's an, uh, it's always good to feel welcomed. Well, this is the same guy who thinks that you can just pay other people to solve all your problems. You, he's never had to solve anything himself ever. He's always, just like when he was commenting on the Texas church shooting, he was like, well, the cops really should have been the one to take care of that. He doesn't think that anybody should have the ability to take care of themselves first because he's always just paid for it to be done. He can't even make memes. Right. (laughs) Trump knows how to make memes. (laughs) He shares memes. He knows memes are funny. He knows memes. (laughs) This guy has to pay people to make memes. He's got a meme 2020 uh, business that he's signed up to make memes for him on Instagram and getting Instagrammers, uh, influencers to kind of make some stuff up for him that's so punk rock of him to <laughs> be paying people it's like it, it, you can't think of anything less uh more disingenuous than coming up with something that is oh by nature like free and it's a free thing that people just <laughs> share yeah. and he's paying let me just flood it with money i'm sure the quality will go up he might be the first person to like pay people for memes all like, right because like like what right. you're saying like you know everyone does just make them it's organic. The yeah. guy who came up with the um, Trump beating up the CNN guy on WWE footage, and he yeah. like edited it all. He did it for free. Yeah, it was, and right. it was just and then Trump reshared it on Twitter, and they're like, "Oh, that's horrible." I think it was wasn't it a kid who made that, and then CNN was trying to. It was a, it was a middle aged uh, forklift driver for that one. Oh, there that was one? a kid that made one that it was the uh, so there's a couple that have gone viral and they've gone after the people. Imagine getting so upset over a meme, right? And then going after the meme creator. Well, it's like I'm knowing like it's, it's the same as internet bullying. I'm like, I'm sorry, just turn turn off your screen right. and go outside, <laughs> and build something with your hands. Right. I don't think there's any candidate that's meme proof right now. The Democratic uh, nom- nominees right now, maybe uh, Tulsi. I haven't really seen anything. I mean, I guess that could also show that she's not as uh, um, relevant. She's right. got some funny reaction photos uh, that we like to trot out. I like to trot out from time to time, so I'll have to drop those uh, a little bit more often, I guess, on Facebook. Yeah, your orb woman um, yes. dropped out, so yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, switch to another, another <laughs> yeah. Marianne Williamson. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah, the left can't meme. Right. <laughs> Snoops, a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got to be organic. It's got to be just... People see it, think it's funny. That's that kind of filters out the crappy memes. And uh, by definition, I mean Michael Bloomberg is not funny. Doesn't have any he clever is, things. He to is say. a meme. That yeah. says well, something yeah. about not being able to understand people, and you know, to be funny, you understand nuances and stuff like that, and attitudes and things that kind of can bring people together and kind of laugh about. It. And the left leftists really can't do any of that stuff. Um, they can't even understand, or apprehend sometimes, like why people mean this about them. <laughs> Right, like Elizabeth Warren, she needed a meme twenty twenty team to tell her, look, if you pass this uh, DNA testing, it's like it's gonna look bad. <laughs> yep. All right, you think you think these Pocahontas memes are, are bad enough? <laughs> You're gonna hear one one thousand twenty fourth for the rest of your life. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and since since Yang dropped out, she's the last Asian person on the stage. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I think uh, Trump has really embraced this organic sort of uh, satirical culture that the internet has made, and that's 
kind of what's propelled him to be successful. He's, you know, he's not afraid to make fun of himself. Not afraid. To, he doesn't take himself too serious. He makes a satire of mostly everybody he interacts with. And mostly what they do is a joke anyway. Right. So. Trump owns his uh, shortcomings. People yeah. make fun of him. He owns it. People make fun of his hands. He talked about how big his hands were. <laughs> like, you know what they say about big hands. He's like, why are you talking about really, Trump? Really, like, it reminds me, well, Ron Paul also had a lot of great uh, material put out by his supporters. You mm-hmm. know, they would just make YouTube videos yeah. uh, on their own accord. And so that's the mark of a real, um, you know, organic movement, grassroots movement. And um, you can't buy your way into that. You know, you can't just buy one ready made. <laughs> Drink it's, tickets for everyone. And hopefully that kind of helps. <laughs> right. I, I think of it like it's the difference between the original two trilogies of Star Wars and then the new, the new <laughs> the trilogy reboot. that came out. You know, that was all Disney, corporate, you know, studied, all that stuff. The old ones were, you know, organic. I think you just made a meme. I think we just put Mickey Mouse ears on Bloomberg and we just, Bloomberg is. How you know, tall is he? I don't know. I heard 5'8, but. That's I don't what, know. yeah, that's what Google says, 5'8. Right. Um, the, and Google some... panders where? To yeah. the left. Yes. Well, yeah. They, I think they're adding the the box he stands with. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the phone book. Yeah. The New York phone book. Yeah. yeah the first thing is how uh, clearly angry he is by like he 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 is feels uncomfortable about it and so he's gotta say i've got lifts i've got boxes that i stand on like <laughs> that's the most humiliating part of it <laughs> uh so what are some of his accomplishments big gulps All right yeah, got rid of those yeah, he um, he's well known for stop and frisk, continuing stop and frisk, uh, and building on it tremendously. He is also well known for a couple of scandals in New York that not a lot of people seem to know about. Um, there were no, like a couple of projects that were funded for to be like around a hundred million dollar projects, and, and the, they grew up to be like seven hundred million, you know, and a lot of uh, scandal involved. But I mean, I think his other one is big gulps, and um, and just. I mean, his and the other one is, of course, like talking about Latino and black communities and saying that's where all the crime they is. Heavily, they need heavier policing and everything like that. Didn't he also change the law where he could serve a third term and then on his third term change it back? What? I'm hmm. pretty sure he did this. Wow. Yeah. That's tyranny. <laughs> he is tyrannical. No, well, <clears throat> it's Northam. He he saw the recall effort coming, so they just like, it's like oh, we're gonna increase the amount it takes to recall me now. Yeah. So mm. it's just the same playbook over and over again. Right. So banning uh, big gulps, uh, sugars. I think some kind of sugar tax. Sugar tax, right? And then uh, stomp and frisk. And I guess that kind of goes into the area of like you know you're not really looking at the cause of these kind of problems in these kind of communities and locking them away doesn't seem to be a, a good recourse for an outcome for many of these people, especially if they're victimless crimes. Um, but it's good to see a lot of uh, people uh, out lashing towards those kind of things, especially from even from the left I've seen. All right. So he's having a hard time, not just with like this crowd here that we saw, at least it was 500 people. And that seemed like uh, if that's the most that you can get out of Richmond, that's good. Yeah. Right. Right. It, it didn't seem like like he had to get a sellout uh, an arena, st- arena or right? something like that. Although at the same time, he could have paid some of them. Right. He has that Bloomberg money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Sanders has been able to do that. He's he's had uh, arenas, and Trump has had arenas. So I think that's the direction uh, political system is going in. You know, populism. So. Right. But yeah, I couldn't imagine that many people showing up for Bloomberg. I mean, what does he what does he really bring to the table? I was well, yeah, I was I was, I was th- saying, thinking the same thing. It's like, oh, there's not going to be any parking. It's like there'll be parking. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was able to find parking about 45 minutes before the event, which is unheard of if you're coming to a Trump or Sanders rally. Probably. Yeah, I got there at um, like 3:50, and I found some parking uh, <laughs> right outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Virginia yeah. Gun yeah. Rally. We had to park a mile and a half away. Yeah. March in. <laughs> If it, if it was a Trump rally, we would have, we would have been there the day before. Yeah. <laughs> Camp out. Yeah. Right. Right. So what does he do now in uh, in New York? He's just uh, 
pontificating on uh, owns his companies, right? Yeah. Makes propaganda news. Right, he's got that Bloomberg uh, yeah. magazine, TV, TV channel, TV channel. No, nobody. I've never watched it. I think it's like CNBC and Fox Business are usually the ones that I feel like most people watch. But all right, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how like he that. can come in here thinking like he's a big name and think he's going to garner that kind of support or or interest. Although I've have heard that he has put a lot of money. And the coffers of uh, Democrats here in Virginia heavily. I think overall, uh, every town for gun safety has spent over six million in Virginia in the last election. So yeah, a fair amount, right? And a big portion to the Democratic Party, a couple to the Attorney General, and then over a million to Northam himself. So yeah, that's he's what, trying to. Yeah, that's what he's known for here, as mm-hmm. much as anything, right? Mm-hmm. Is his manipulation of the political system. So. Right. Carl Lozer, a friend, Libertarian, who ran back then for Palatine, uh, told me that Bloomberg gave $100,000 to his opponent. Oh, man. Oh. All right. Mm. So I think that's a weird influence. Like we talk about Russian influence coming in all the time. And, you know, we don't want kind of other kind of influence coming into the United States. We just kind of have the same sort of reciprocation for no New Yorker influence coming into Virginia politics. Mm. Um, and some people could say that, well, Trump's a New Yorker. It's like, okay, that's fine too. You know, <laughs> anyone who's not outside of Virginia shouldn't have any say or, or anything to do with what we do here in Virginia. Yeah, it's the ugliest part of it is like you feel like you're in a Petri dish or test case for this billionaire to kind of, you're one of his playthings that he gets to manipulate your life and manipulate your elected leaders and like, oh, well, I decided to put a lot of money in a political <laughs> campaign. And, and now, like, we just get to live with that outcome, you know, and if enough people say no, then there's nothing you can do about it. Right. I think the funniest part of it, though, is that he's spending so much money just to lose. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I don't really see him getting the nomination at all. If he's if party park, party park, brewery is the, <laughs> the most he can get and he's not getting stadiums. Um, I don't know if that's like his the, I guess that is his field. He said this is the, the state that he has come to the most. Right. So it's not that far from New York. And I guess this will kind of be a base for him to kind of push off with the uh, Northam blackface guy. I mean, it is uh, Black History Month. So <laughs> got a good, good mention for that guy. <laughs> yeah. um, He's the most important black person from Virginia. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think what we did there was good. Was was a good uh, vibe check of the situation there. And just kind of... The group, like, always oh, Sonny goes to Bloomberg and gets <laughs> kicked out. <laughs> the funny thing is, I mean, I, I pitched this to all my friends as, you want to get kicked out of this rally? You know, and I'm, I'm kind of upset. We, we, I wish we had more people. That would have been a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it would have been great if we had an entire half of the room that oh. was, like, all just people like us who registered for it and... Yeah. Uh, just half the room is gone. And then we just, <laughs> you know, once we all get, once we all march out. Or we all do our chant at the same time. They can't kick us all out. Right. Oh. Right. Right. You get right. enough numbers and, uh, right. He's the talking to him. Wow. Well, that's yeah. fine. Kick us out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Or use up his hour. <laughs> well, I guess that's, uh, just a welcome here, I guess. <laughs> Southern hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was good. That was a good chant. Uh, good running through some of the, what was this, VCDL? Mm-hmm. Always yeah. confused with BDCL, VCDL. Yeah, Virginia Citizens Defense League. Right. And uh, they were good to be uh, outside and uh, good people to kind of run into afterwards. My friend Tim was like held by the collar by a cop <laughs> going out. Um, and he didn't really, Tim didn't do an outburst yell uh, like he did, but he was there with him. Uh, right next to him and said, yeah, get off of him. Don't do that. And started yelling too. And then I'm uh, like, all right, these two have to get out. <laughs> <laughs> because of how he was dressed. I think he was, he was definitely profiled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't really saying I mean, he was doing he was everything quiet. he could to look like somebody. Yeah. <laughs> he was suspicious. I mean, he did have the sticker up here too. Yeah. So I guess. On his hat. I yeah, took mine off right. for a second. I took my sticker off and just kind of put it under my coat while you guys were getting escorted out. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, is it safe? Okay. And then I took it back out. That's, what, that's probably what they did. They saw Tim and the sticker guy. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> and the cop went out there holding him like by the scruff. To... <laughs> I probably could have stayed there after you all got kicked out because, like, I don't think anybody thought I was with you or something. Or... You did a good uh, way of leaving it like a rock star going like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the media panning out. I was like the only it looked, yeah. Some of the video was like I was the only person there when it was really started by by Vince. So. I just yeah. want everybody to know it was not my idea. No, it was my idea. It was definitely my idea. I'll own that. Um, yeah, my thought was uh, well, we at least wanted to put the stickers on and make uh, make us think about it. And I knew he was going to do something. And I figured if security is dealing with him. I was like, this is our moment. I was like, all right, guys, ready for our chat? <laughs> <laughs> right when Bloomberg thinks it's over, we interrupt him again <laughs> and start yelling. Yeah. I, I probably would have started saying different things if two things didn't happen. One, someone knocked my glasses off and I could not find them anywhere. So, I mean, that just made me more mad. I thought they gave you a little interesting courtesy check. You're like, my yeah. glasses. Like, oh, yeah, dude, his glasses. Yeah. Hold on. And oh, then yeah. the second, now get the hell out of here. <laughs> in the in the video, the second I grabbed the glasses, I just started back at it again, like. Oh, yeah. like you know. <laughs> and then I'm I'm being escorted out, and um, this old white lady comes up, and she just she just like pours her beer all over me, and then you know at that point like I'm just like all right, you know you want to be like that? I'm just gonna keep going then. It might have been by accident too, like somebody might have bumped into her. Oh but, no no no, it was oh. deliberate. Like, she oh. looked at me in the eyes and it like went like this. She was probably almost this far away. Mm. Wow. wow wow that was that was another instance of racism yeah. racism was, yeah here shame shame yeah. shame on all their houses yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all it was and that's the thing it was all old rich people oh or maybe not rich but all old white people like it, that's, was that's all it was pathetic i've never seen more men being driven by their wives than yeah. when i was waiting outside <laughs> of it was like one after another and she's clearly like lecturing him as she's driving honey <laughs> And These are the points, honey. I need you to memorize them. <laughs> and all the men sounded like Bloomberg. They were whiny yeah. and stuff, and the wives were bossing them around, yelling at them. And I was just like, this is this is weird. Like, Puffer coats. I, I will say when we were outside, um, when we got kicked out and we joined up with, uh, with the group outside with the protesters, we were at a really good spot to heckle them coming out. And I think for most of these Democrats... I don't think uh, they've ever had anyone yell at them in their, in their lives. I think they're very good at, yeah. at yelling at other people, like, you're suspended, you're fired, you're revoked. Uh, but I don't think... Uh, <laughs> you're revoked. <laughs> I don't think they ever had anyone yelling at them, get out of here, Yankees. <laughs> and they're like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, They're usually the ones who get to call everybody else racist. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, in this instance, they were getting called racist, and I don't yeah. think they knew how to deal with that. Yeah, they didn't. You know, we the narrative for us that... You you know, we stuck to your, they're fascist, they're racist, they're sexist, and they they didn't know what to say. They just said, "Oh, we're dumb. Oh, you have low IQs." Okay, well, that's not a rebuttal. Well, these right. people, they're the same. I was asked them, "Well, why do you think that the government needs to be so much better armed than the people that they wish to rule over?" Because if you think that, then I don't know. You got some weird ideas. Because government's not always, you know, all gravy. Yeah. You think his uh, security personnel bodyguards were armed in there? Definitely not. No, yeah, they just karate chop everybody. Like, yeah. have you seen the <laughs> fake like uh, Chinese martial artists? <laughs> They're experts in that. Mm. They just shoot their chi at people and they pass. And out. he's a small guy, so you got you got to aim low. People were kind of right. you know. So a lot of police showed up though as we were getting escorted out. It seemed like like there were additional cop cars and they were they were blocking from the they were stepping in between the right. Bloomberg people and us. And uh, a, cu- a couple of times there was like some confrontations. Some old dudes with canes were trying to like start some shit. Right. I couldn't believe that. Like they just you know we're we're on the sidewalk. We have nowhere else to go. We're stuck in this small little area, and then they just start trying to walk through us. And then it's like, what do you? We're not moving. You know, where are we going to go? If we go in the street or anything like that, we're now we're going to get in trouble. Right. So, like, they deliberately were trying to, like, go through us, and then they were touching me and stuff. And I don't I don't know why people always want to touch me. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 I think they're, you know, racist. And they I don't think so. Like I got minorities. singled out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they're there in the comfy of comfort of the, the police who are armed right. to kind of protect them if they need something, right? And uh, I did try to talk to some of the cops. There's one cop that was, like, getting to him, and, not to say, like, uh, could they, you know, I, I think I might know actually maybe one good cop, very libertarian, but that's about it. And But these cops, though, there's one guy I was talking to. He's like, so would you uh, would you take our guns? Are they passing? The guy's like, and then uh, and I pointed him out with, their, with, with our friends. Like, this guy's thinking about it. And the guy got upset and just went to the other side <laughs> of the other cops. <laughs> well, the one guy. Because there's, there's, there's some cops who are trying to be very stoic yeah. and not listen. 
but one of them was well, we were getting to him and he was just trying to walk away so he didn't, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't think about it more internally <laughs> I, I wonder if that was the same cop that escorted me and tim out because oh no when, that guy was what that guy looked like an elmer fudd looking yeah, character yeah, yeah that's yeah. not the same cop oh, that's okay. yeah that's um because that guy when when he started pushing tim around outside i was yelling at him like saying like don't touch him stop touching him and then he was like, you too, get off the property. And he pushes me. <laughs> and I was like, the whole time I was walking off the property. Now, to be honest with you, um, when he was like talking to me inside saying I had to leave, I was like, yes, sir. You know, I was very like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Like all that stuff. Very compliant with him. And then he's still like pushing me and stuff. I was like, you don't have to Nobody do did that to me. I never seemed to get, maybe I put off like cool vibes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, we were laughing a lot. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that, that probably didn't help. Like I see the whole thing as kind of a big joke. I mean, I see yeah. the, Mike Bloomberg as a joke and I see all his supporters as a joke yeah. and us kind of as like making fun of them too. So. I mean, yeah, we it's all for really... the memes. Yeah. It's for the memes. Yeah, I like how the uh, when we were kicked out, they're like yelling at the cops, these two, and the cops uh, were just kind of busy with Tim. <laughs> and I mean, we're all so I was like, I guess we'll walk with them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a fun event. Uh, it was cool the way that we just kind of vibe checked the place and gave him a good reminder that not make it easy for Bloomberg to come in here and think like, yeah. Virginia seems to appreciate and like me. He's like, no, Virginians don't really particularly like you. <laughs> and I think it's good for us to make a show for that. Uh, demonstrations I thought are good, but I think uh, sometimes going in there and making a stink about this sort of stuff is uh, an appropriate response too. I think next steps Fight Club. <laughs> we'll be the ones that set the event up, and then uh, yeah, I'll be in charge of the drink ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yep, no problem. Any Paid last uh, comments? Paid for by Bloomberg. <laughs> yeah, the next step is for us to get jobs in the Bloomberg campaign and infiltrate it from the inside. Right. And, uh, that, then just start handing out, yeah, free drink tickets. Right. To, to <laughs> if you have your gun save live stickers, extra drink tickets. Right. right. If you got a Bloomberg sticker, no drink for you. <laughs> Puffer coat, absolutely nothing for you. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> So with that, those listening, uh, stay liberated. Six Emperor Tyrannus. Get off my property. Prank guns, not money. Six Emperor Tyrannus. <laughs> All right. Beat Donald Trump. <laughs> Save lives! Good save lives! Good save lives! Good save lives!